All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Apologies for uh, the bit uh, long inconvenience. Uh, all right. So, as you say, we should be talking today about partial lambda with very cold demos, which we will not be able to deliver, unfortunately, due to some difficulties in uh, the audio video thingy. Uh, so over the past 16 years, PowerShell has been heavily used by technology professionals such as developers, IT pros, over the time mainly to avoid going through repetitive tasks, doing things via the manage and click point method, um, and also to save themselves some time by using some tool to automate, uh, to automate things. And that's what PowerShell uh, is meant to help with. Um, and that's why also 10 years ago at AWS, we uh, launched and announced the AWS tools for PowerShell, which was mainly meant at that time in particular for Windows users who would like to create, operate, and run their AWS resources and services. And over the time, huge investment has been put into that to make sure that uh, PowerShell supports pretty much most of the services on AWS, which is kind of what we do uh, nowadays. So uh, my name is Mohamed Wali. I work as a solutions architect at AWS Solutions Architecture team. I'm based out of Amsterdam, the Netherlands, uh, mainly acting as a technical advisor for enterprise and, and, and retail customers within the Benelux region, helping them in their, in their journey to the cloud. So what we're going to talk about today clearly is uh, PowerShell and Lambda. So you can really bring the best of both worlds, bring your own uh, scripts, bring your own expertise with PowerShell, and being able to run it on top of AWS Lambda. But before getting started, I'm quite curious to know if any of you is already familiar with AWS or has used AWS before. All right, that's good to see that like 50% of the attendees did. So have you run AWS Lambda by any means on top of AWS before? All right, so th that, that works and that counts. So for the very two who run Lambda, did you run PowerShell on top of AWS Lambda before? All right, that's good. Uh, was it the old way with the .NET? So I hope this session would be quite beneficial for you because this is talking about a different way of how you can do it using the custom runtime. So yeah, this session is mainly about an easier way than the initial one we started to support back in 2018 on how you can build and deploy your PowerShell scripts on top of uh, AWS Lambda. And I'm, I think it's safe to assume that pretty much all of you are already familiar with uh, PowerShell. Yet it's no shame to really have a quick you know, recap for what PowerShell is. Uh, I'm a fan actually for PowerShell and that's why I like to talk about it. So previously it used to be known as Windows PowerShell and that has been the case for a very, very long time. I think till 2016 when Microsoft launched and introduced the PowerShell core at that time, which was kind of big milestone in, in, in the lifetime of PowerShell because it really went beyond the walls of Windows to start supporting other operating systems, such as Linux and uh, uh, Mac OS. So many people call it a scripting language, and it's quite well known in the community as scripting language. I, I personally don't like to call it a scripting language, mainly because it's so mature, huge investment has been put into it. So I, I would prefer to call it like a programming language, but for IT operators. By the end of the day, it's an object-oriented language, so it, it, it deserves some respect, let's call it this way. Simply, um, it's, it's an open source shell based on uh, the .NET technology beyond the scenes. That's meant to uh, help you to create automation scripts and uh, uh, tool configurations. So PowerShell loves reacting to events, right? I mean, one of the very common use cases is to, for example, schedule a task and, and uh, run PowerShell scripts to take a certain action at, uh, 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 during that time. And that's why having PowerShell together with Lambda would be actually the perfect match, mainly because uh, that's what Lambda is for. I'm going to just talk about Lambda shortly. So why Lambda? Uh, anyone, oh, all right, so we already know that we have a few here who are familiar with Lambda. If you're not, AWS Lambda is a native serverless service on AWS, which simply provides you uh, an interface that you can utilize to provide your code, provision it, and don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure by any means. Of course, there is still some responsibility, for example, to restrict the access to it uh, and so on. But by the end of the day, it's, it's, we have tons of guides that you can also count on in the journey. And it's also out of, uh, out of today's topic. So what are the benefits of AWS Lambda? Mainly, it can help you to run your code without you know, provisioning infrastructure or servers, as I just said. Pretty much everything is fully managed for you under the hood. 
And when it comes to scaling, well, if the application or the partial code you're running is running intensively, it needs to that that instance that's running on top of it behind the scenes to scale out, scale in, um, scale up, scale down. It's not something you really have to worry about, mainly because uh, it's already managed for you as well. A very cool thing when it comes to working with Lambda, you can just go ahead and invoke its API anytime, mainly because uh, you would like to test out something, or you just want like to make sure that the, that the function is acting properly, or you can just test it in response to events. So you can have a, a scheduled event that would invoke it via another service, for example, such as Amazon CloudWatch, and uh, uh, it would it would uh, trigger this one to have it up and running, or even a general event that has been generated by another service on AWS. A very cool thing about it, you really don't have to worry about uh, how much you going to pay, uh, especially if you don't run heavy applications on top of it and you run them like uh, uh, you don't need it for consistent running, mainly because uh, you only pay for the compute time you use. So if you're running your script like four times per day, for example, well, that's a very good fit, mainly because if it runs four times per day, two minutes for each run, then you're going to be charged for eight minutes per day. I mean, you already created the function. It's just there, ready to respond to your events anytime. And that actually reflects on the utilization pattern. So since the very early days of uh, traditional and on-premises data centers, we just used to go ahead, pay upfront for all the gears, all in to meet our big traffic, which not necessarily we're going to meet all the time. And that means we have many underutilized resources and servers. And this problem has been drastically solved when we initially started to move to the cloud. And uh, when we talk about AWS, for example, we have EC2 Instance, with the, which is a virtual machine flavor of AWS. And that's where you can just run the virtual machines you need to do the work you need, and that's pretty much it. It can scale in and out, up and down also, to meet your business demands, uh, and, and that was uh, and that resulted actually in, in tons of cost savings as well. But that was not really a good fit for every single use case we have. Mainly because, think about the very same example I was just talking about. When you have uh, a task that runs multiple times per day, and you don't need to have a dedicated server ready just to execute this task, right? And that's what AWS Serverless is here to help with. It's meant to handle these tasks for uh, running for a short time, um, and eventually you just pay for this short time instead of having uh, a server up and running all the day long. So with that, let's go through the PowerShell runtime for Lambda. So uh, back in time, in 2018, we started to support PowerShell and Lambda to be accurate PowerShell Core 6.0 on top of uh, .NET uh, Core uh, 2.1 runtime. Um, and, and that was the purpose behind it was mainly just to empower partial developers to use AWS Lambda in their event-driven architectures, or bring their own scripts and run it on the cloud. And um, how, how the process really looked like at that time, you initially needed to compile your um, uh, partial code into a C-sharp.net binary, all good, all worked. But that was a bit tricky, actually, from the perspective of uh, having a visibility over your code, which you really didn't manage to see and uh, 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 play around with it on the Lambda console, while also on the other side, it was quite hard to test it locally. In general, it was not really a seamless process to play around with and not that easy to deploy PowerShell on Lambda, comparing to the otherly natively supported programming languages such as .NET itself, Python, Java, and so on. And that's why into later on 2018, I believe, uh, AWS Lambda custom runtime came out. And that was actually a game changer for many things and not necessarily only for Lambda, uh, for PowerShell. Mainly because it enabled you to literally run any language you'd like on top of Lambda. You just bring your own custom runtime, which could be any Linux distribution, and voila, you can build on top of it whatever you'd like to build. So I've been talking about runtime, so what it simply does. Uh, so for AWS Lambda, we do provide um, runtime for, or every language has to go through a runtime in order to be executed. The runtime here is mainly responsible to provide a language specific uh, to run in a specific environment, uh, uh, execution environment, mainly to uh, have your code working in an environment mainly dedicated for it and not conflicting with anything else that might result in latency or taking long time to execute your code and so on. 
And it, it comes in two flavors nowadays. The managed runtime, which are, <coughs> which are natively offered to you by AWS Lambda, or the custom runtime, which you can bring uh, on your own. The managed one are mainly based on Amazon Linux or Linux 2, and it does support at this time .NET, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Java, and Go, and so on. For the custom runtime, you can bring any Linux distribution mainly, and you can run on top of it any language you would like to run. And that can be a shell script, a language script, a compiled binary executable, whatever you would like. By the end of the day, uh, that's, that's what it's meant to offer you this kind of flexibility when it comes to doing whatever you would like on top of Lambda. And that's what we're going to utilize in our session today. Custom runtime to run PowerShell on top of it so we can have a native PowerShell runtime instead of running it on top of a .NET Core runtime. So what are the benefits for custom runtime uh, with PowerShell? And the first one is mainly to use native PowerShell runtime. And this is, you know, as, as I just mentioned, you don't have to host it on top of uh, uh, IS, uh, sorry, on top of uh, .NET Core runtime or, or um, uh, have to add extra layer on top of it. You can play around with the PowerShell code now on uh, uh, the AWS Management Console, mainly because, you know, uh, it's, it's natively supported. It's not in compiled as a binary as, as uh, part of something else. And last but not least, it made the, sh the code sharing across the different function uh, more easily and seamlessly. So native PowerShell runtime. Uh, well, with the native PowerShell runtime, as I just mentioned, no compilation needed. You don't have to run it on top of .NET Core. And, and this kind of having native runtime actually comes with its benefits as well. So having this native runtime results in a, a runtime environment that matches a standard PowerShell session. And as a result, this would simplify the development and testing process of your PowerShell code on top of AWS as well. The very same custom runtime you're going to use also made it easy for you now to have more visibility over your function uh, uh, logging. So any outputs that are coming from your PowerShell functions now, you can just get a visibility for pretty much the whole output because back in time with the previous solution, you only got to see the last uh, output in the pipeline of your PowerShell. Otherwise, you have no visibility. So that's what this uh, solution is trying to tackle here and giving you more control over your function output, over your um, uh, error messages, and your login solution as a whole, which would be eventually get dumped to another login solution, such as uh, CloudWatch. You can play around with your code in the AWS Management Console, and now it's quite easy, as you see. You can just go ahead, open the Lambda, add your code, uh, play around with it, test it out even, which was not that easy to be done with the previous version, even locally. And in the meantime, if you're writing or provisioning your infrastructure as code, in this case the Lambda, you can actually embed the PowerShell code as part of your infrastructure as code template now. So you don't have to do it separately and independently. Last but not least, it's quite easy now to share the code between the functions as well. So starting from adding the partial runtime to multiple functions, think about it in a way that you don't really have to run or execute something particular in every single function to run partial on top of it. In fact, it's going to be just a custom runtime, shareable across pretty much all of the functions you would like, because it's quite just partial core binaries, and that's it. On the other side, it made it quite easy as well to uh, share the modules across the multiple functions. So think about having modules these could be third-party modules, could be your own modules that you authored, and now you still can, uh, well, you actually can uh, share these modules across different functions without having to include them and append them in every single function you create. You just need to create them once and utilize them across pretty much the whole functions. And last but not least, that can actually go through the Lambda layers, which I will dive deep on later, but it's simply a way to break down your code into small chunks that is going to serve a certain purpose, and then you can build on top of it. So if you'd like to have maybe uh, a layer just for a certain module, you can do it. If you would like to have another layer for another third-party module, you can do it. So you can break them down, play around with them, and by the end of the day, you can share them easily and seamlessly across uh, uh, your different Lambda functions. We're supposed to have a demo now. Clearly, we cannot, due to some uh, 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 difficulties with uh, uh, the presentation, 
Uh, but I would be sharing with you by the end of the session actually the GitHub repo and the AWS blog post that describes pretty much how you can run and execute that. So um, in the very first demo, what we're supposed to cover is to show you how easy it is to just go ahead now, create your partial code in the console, and see how easy it is to, to, to get a result and how fast it is. In this section, what we are supposed to talk about all right, how we can really build the underlying piece of PowerShell, how we can build the custom runtime, how we can build uh, the layers that we can build on top of this custom runtime in order to eventually uh, uh, run uh, our PowerShell scripts in the most efficient manner. So deploying a PowerShell custom runtime starts by creating a PowerShell custom runtime lambda layer. So when you have to go ahead uh, and, and create your own uh, AWS Lambda, you would have the option to choose to create it based on a custom runtime. Let's say Amazon Linux 2 in this case, and what it's going to give you just an Amazon Linux 2. No, no languages or anything installed on top of it by any means. So you need to create a layer that would have these binaries of PowerShell so you can execute PowerShell scripts on top of it later on. And that's what this very first task is all about. Afterwards, optionally, you can add any extra layers that would contain any additional modules. As mentioned earlier, these can be uh, your, your own modules, third-party modules, or AWS tools for PowerShell module if you'd like to use PowerShell with AWS uh, resources and services. And last but not least, you need to build your own Lambda function, uh, which is simply writing the code that would be running on top of these layers that you have just added and created initially. So I've been talking about Lambda layers for some time. What it really is, uh, well, it's simply a way to give you um, uh, some way to segregate uh, the, different, the different pieces of your code. As I mentioned earlier, you can use it to uh, create your own uh, Lambda layer, just that would have your own PowerShell modules, or for the AWS tools for PowerShell, or anything else. That really has a good impact on, on reducing the number or, or the size of uploaded uh, archives that you have to upload to the Lambda in order to deploy your own code, because it would be already there, and it would make it way faster, actually, because you really don't have to include it as part of your initial code and execute it. It would be already there for you as part of your runtime. So with that, once we manage to build the, the Lambda function, we know how to do it. Uh, what's actually the deployment process? How does the deployment process look like? So first off, we need to uh, build the layers and the functions. And we can do that using uh, PowerShell for Windows, uh, PowerShell Core on Linux, or even on Windows Subsystem Linux, or even using Docker CLI. By the end of the day, uh, it can run on containers as well. Or you can use the AWS serverless application model, or AWS SAM which is an open, uh, open source uh, framework that's mainly meant to help you building serverless applications on top of AWS. It has its own CLI as well, and it can help you mainly to build uh, the layers needed for your, PowerShell, uh, for your PowerShell code on top of Lambda. Once you're done with building the code, what you need to do next, or, well, it's not necessary, but it's nice, because now you can test your PowerShell code locally to make sure it's giving you the output you want. And for that, you can use actually AWS SAM to test it locally. You can just, it's, it's a very simple command, just SAM local invoke. It's not really going to run it on top of Lambda, but it's going to emulate it into your local laptop and giving you the exact same result that the Lambda should have uh, 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 resulted in while running it on the cloud. Once you test it locally, all good, all fine, you can actually start to deploy it to the cloud. You need to deploy your code now to the cloud. And for that, you can use AWS CLI, you can use, AW, uh, you can use AWS Tools PowerShell, or even AWS SAM CLI as well in order to deploy it. It's a very basic command. For example, if we're talking about SAM, it's just SAM deploy. If you'd like a guided deployment one, you can just add the flag of G, which would give you like, what would you like to name uh, uh, the SAM application? If you'd like to roll back the cloud formation that would deploy these resources or not, because eventually, SAM is just cloud formation under the hood. It's not really using something uh, 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 dedicated to it. Last but not least, you build your function. You manage to test it locally. All good or fine. It's deployed to the cloud. Next step is to really invoke it to make sure it's working fine by just hitting the Lambda API, 
making sure it's returning the results you expected for. And for that, you can use PowerShell, you can use AWS CLI, you can use an event trigger if you are associating it with any other event sources that would trigger it. Or if it's exposed via a URL, just open the URL and it would invoke it automatically. Well, another lovely demo that we should have had, how we can really build these layers from scratch and then how we can build our partial code on top of it. Well, uh, as mentioned, still to be shared with you uh, by the end of the session, the blog post and the guidance for how you can use this partial code to do it. Um, and one thing that should we have gone through in our demo is actually showing you how we can use the Lambda handlers with PowerShell. So one of the ways is, well, handler is simply um, a way for you to define what would you like to execute from your files. For example, if you have a partial script created and deployed to your Lambda function, what would you like to deploy? Maybe you would like to deploy the whole partial script, and in this case, we just specify the script name. Maybe you would like to deploy or execute a function within this script. In this case, you need to specify the script name, double quotes, and then the function name or maybe you would like to execute a function within a certain module, which is still a valid option as well. And you can do uh, by just specifying the, the module, double quotes, module, uh, sorry, double columns, then you need to pass the module name and then double columns to specify uh, the function name. So what does, or what, what, how does it actually work out for running or uh, executing the whole partial script? Well, in this case, it just goes through the whole script, executed from A to Z, a just no initialization process would take place outside the handler. And the initialization process here refers to what the function is doing while it's warming up to get up and running to allocate some resources for you to execute your code eventually. So all the code deployment or execution happens after the initialization, not during the initialization, which is a bit different actually on the other two uh, examples. So if you'd like to execute a function from within the, the, uh, your own script, in this case, well, only the function would be executed and the output would be displayed to you. But on the other side, it, during the initialization process, it's going to run pretty much any other code throughout the process. And that's mainly to, uh, for example, if there is a need to import a module or anything, pretty much all of these might not be included as part of the function itself. So you need to do it beforehand. And that's what uh, the Lambda would do for you in this case. It just would go ahead at the initialization process at the very beginning, import pretty much all of these modules, load them for you, so you can execute your function with what, with what you actually need out of this script. Last but not least, to run a function from within a module, and, and it's pretty much the same as the previous example. The only difference here, it would start the function by importing the module and not doing anything with a certain script in general but pretty much all, all the next steps are the same as the previous example. When you do work with Lambda PowerShell, um, you find out that the new solutions come with two default variables that you can use anytime. One of them is the Lambda input, and the other one is the Lambda context. The Lambda input is simply an object that can have you know, any input data that's being processed to the Lambda in order to invoke it. So think about it, for example, if we would like to test the Lambda function on AWS, we can create just a test event on the console. And in this test event, we can pass pretty much any JSON input we would like, just dummy, dummy uh, uh, contents such, such as this one. What the Lambda input variable would have or be able to retrieve, uh, the, the Lambda input variable, would just retrieve this value. So think about it in a bigger scenario where you are integrating it with other AWS services providing certain input to invoke the Lambda function. If you would like to include it as part of your PowerShell script, that's actually very doable. With the Lambda context on the other side, it's a bit different here because it simply provides you know, multiple methods and properties with certain Im information about the invocation, uh, the runtime, and, and, and the function itself. Uh, a good method that you can use with this variable is to retrieve you know, the remaining time in milliseconds. So maybe you would like to test out uh, you have specified like a 10 seconds uh, timeout for your Lambda function, but you're quite curious to see how much time might be left after the execution. Actually, you can use this method and it can retrieve it for you. 
So we have been talking about earlier about how great custom runtime is for PowerShell, mainly because it can help you to literally get all of the functions output and eventually log it. And that's, that's what exactly the function response is referring to here. Everything placed on the pipeline and literally everything placed would be dumped to you so you can see it in the logs eventually. So even the write-output one, because uh, write-output commandlet used to be more supported with the previous .NET implementation, but now it is. And if any responses that are coming back are not strings, they would be converted back to you for as strings using the convert to JSON commandlet. Uh, so it would be actually uh, dump, uh, well, pushable to the Amazon Cloud Watchlog group eventually, which is the place you can store your logs in. So speaking of the logging, well, uh, we do use uh, an AWS service called Amazon CloudWatch that I mentioned a couple of times so far. It's simply a monitoring service on AWS, provides you with some logging, with some metrics. Pretty much any Lambda function, when you create it, a dump it it's, it's logs to uh, Amazon CloudWatch logs, logs a group right away. So you don't have to uh, do anything extraordinary unless you're creating it with maybe infrastructure as code. In this case, you can also control the name of the CloudWatch group, if you would like to set a retention period, and so on, which is not natively supported if you're doing it manually. So uh, in this case, what you're going to have in, in, in uh, your login solution, pretty much everything taking place at the function or coming out, uh, out of the PowerShell pipeline response, and any output from you know any command lists such as write-host, verpose information, warning, and even uh, write error. On the other side, for your metrics, Amazon CloudWatch also provides many metrics by default for your running Lambda. So you can have uh, some insights about uh, the invocations uh, and, and uh, the concurrency of the Lambda function, uh, maybe some insights about the memory and so on. So you can also be able to check the health of your uh, Lambda function as well. Error handling, pretty much like any programming language. It happens in two levels here. One, on the function level. And you know, in this case, you can, your function code can just simply go ahead and throw any uh, uh, exception or return an uh, error object. And the runtime it, uh, it's w uh, itself as well can terminate the function, maybe, for example, because your syntax is not correct, or maybe because uh, it ran out of the timeout you have specified for it, so it took longer to, to execute. Uh, or fail to marshal the response object into JSON. And if, if you work it with Lambda, that's a very famous error that people get. And, and what it simply means is sometimes the data types of JSON are quite hard to be converted into the data type of the programming language you're, you're using. And, and, and that's why you're getting this error. One of the funniest ones, though. Um, so yeah, pretty much all the errors got written eventually to CloudWatch logs and even uh, for the synchronous invocation, and that's on the Lambda level, not on the partial script level. If there is any synchronous invocations you're using with Lambda, they would be also returned in the output, so you can check them out in your login solution. <sighs> well, that was a heck of a journey. Started off with uh, some difficulties uh, to set up uh, the presentation, but we made it here. So uh, let's call it, give it a wrap. Uh, well, as you have seen, if you use the previous solution, it has some limitations, it has some difficulties to work with. What we have just presented today is just an, a simpler way, an easier way to work around with PowerShell on Lambda. I have promised that I'm going to share with you the code and the description for pretty much everything I discussed, and there you go. This bar code or this URL is going to redirect you to an AWS blog post talking about this new solution that we just started to provide last year. It also includes a GitHub repo that uh, pretty much includes all the code that I should have gone through in the demo today. Eventually, PowerShell is cool, Lambda is cool, make them work together. You can use them to build event-driven architectures. You don't have to run anything else like any other programming language. If you're not comfortable with it, just go ahead and do it. So with that, uh, if there is any questions, I would be more than happy to address. Uh, yeah, yes, you can. Mainly because, well, it's not Windows partial on top of Lambda, it's partial core eventually because it runs on top of Linux. But you can just import the module uh, on, on, on uh, your custom runtime. All you need to do is to make sure that Lambda has accessibility uh, 
to your Active Directory environment in order to run your Active Directory command, let's eventually. No, uh, it's, it's, it's not supported. It's only Linux, so custom runtime at this stage supports only Linux distributions. And by the end of the day, you don't actually have to worry about it because you don't manage it yourself. You only add the partial custom runtime on top of it, and then you write the partial code. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah? Yeah, the, there is a great improvement in terms of uh, how fast it gets spin up. Mainly because, um, as mentioned, it, it, the other one just was just compiled as a C-sharp .NET binary and runs on top of a .NET Core runtime. So first off, you need to have, when you invoke the Lambda function, you need to have your Lambda function allocating the needed resources to execute your code. That's the first step. And that's happened for every single time you, you work with Lambda with any language. But on top of that, that takes a bit longer than what, how you do it natively here. Mainly because there is no underlying layers. It just go ahead, execute it, and, and, and that's pretty much it. In fact, one thing I also wanted to show out throughout the demo, which is the bootstrapping for the customer on time. Actually, when you bootstrap your Amazon Linux, the very first thing it does is to open PowerShell with no profile associated. So eventually, you just get um, PowerShell from moment zero. When you when you work on on uh, uh, with the custom runtime, and that's that's why it's quite fast actually as well. Any other questions? All right. So with that, I really would like to thank for your time, your patience as well to get the laptop on, up and running. Uh, my name is Mohammed Wali. Uh, I would like to thank you for your time, and I wish you a lovely day ahead.